Hey everybody, I'm Christy Wilhelmy from Garden Nerd, and today I want to talk about cleaning your hose nozzle. Because how many times has your hose nozzle gotten all gunked up for one reason or another and it just like squirts off in every direction and doesn't do the job it's supposed to do? Well, there are a few reasons why this might happen. I'm going to go over that with you. So let's take this thing apart and see what's going on. You'll see that I have a few things in front of me and these are going to help us clean the hose nozzle. This is something you can do <clears throat> quarterly, seasonally, whenever, at the end of the season when you're putting your tools away or when you're taking them out, better before, but you know. Uh, there are a number of things that can go wrong with hose nozzles. One is if it's leaking out the bottom, it's probably because this washer has fallen out somewhere or is damaged in some way. So you can find these rubber gaskets at hardware stores usually in packs of 10 and they're good to have on hand so you want to jam another one of these in there and that's going to stop things from leaking out the bottom if there's leakage from the connecting point uh, it's usually because it's either not screwed on tight enough so a phillips head screwdriver will do that or because the o-ring inside has somehow become damaged or dislocated we'll address that when we open this up a lot of times, the thing that goes wrong with hose nozzles, though, is that it just kind of starts getting clogged. There are two reasons why it gets clogged. One is you have maybe hard water and calcium deposits build up inside and it makes it uh, difficult for the water to go out the different hose, you know, sprayer settings. You can soak it in something called CLR, which is, stands for calcium, lime, and rust. And surprisingly, CLR is a product that is a, a pretty non-toxic and safe. It is, it in fact, gets an A rating on uh, the Environmental Working Group's database of products and cleaners and whatnot. So you can soak it in a bowl overnight and it will run pretty clean the next day. But we don't have calcium, hard, de hard water deposits or anything like that here at Garden Nerd headquarters. The thing that happens most of the time for us is dirt, debris, and critters get in there. Yeah, I know it sounds weird, but earwigs crawl in here when I'm storing this in my mailbox at my community garden, and then they end up getting pushed out the holes or partway pushed out the holes when you screw this on and start using it. And that is what I want to address with all of these supplies here. What I have here, I have a bowl, Phillips head screwdriver, uh, vinegar, baking soda, and a box of pins. Now you can use either a really thin uh, sta straight pin or push pin. Usually safety pins are a little too thick. You might need to go thinner than that. All right, real quick, a note about vinegar. This bottle just happens to be an industrial strength. Vinegar is very strong. Uh, you don't need that, just a regular old household vinegar is going to do just fine. That and baking soda will get you through most of, most of this task. So I want to show you how to use all of this to clean your stuff and have a, basically a brand new hose nozzle when you're done. The first thing you want to do is take off this head here and you use a Phillips head screwdriver to unscrew this. Now there usually aren't too many moving parts here. Uh, the screw comes out, set it aside. I'm working on a towel because when vinegar is involved, if you're working on a counter, especially a marble countertop, it can be a problem. Uh, now, there's usually an O-ring around here. This is the O-ring right here. And it can come out and it can get dislodged. But if you're gonna, you could take this out and clean it, wipe off any grit and grime, or lubricate it and put it back in. It just fits right there then there are replacements available. This mechanism is a spring and sometimes when you take your hose nozzle apart, it can spring out and that can be difficult. So I like to keep it upright so that it, that doesn't happen, but it's pretty secure, it's not gonna fall out. Now, I've got this head and if you shake it, you can sometimes hear that there's stuff inside. A lot of times the holes around the outer edge have become clogged with, I'm gonna say it, earwig legs. It's what happens to me. Um, also dirt, twigs, grime, whatever. So we're gonna start with, uh, first I put this inside the bowl. I'm gonna take some, just a handful of baking soda and put this, sprinkle that over the top. It's a good day to be wearing a black shirt. All right, and then I'm gonna take some vinegar and pour it and it's 
very full container of vinegar and it's going to foam and it's that foaming action that agitates what's caught inside those places and will bubble free. So I do this and let it sit for maybe 15, 20 minutes, up to half an hour. You can leave it there. Uh, I keep adding vinegar a little bit at a time and it reactivates the baking soda. And this will go for a little while. Sometimes I'll flip it over and you'll start to see things floating in the, in the liquid in here, in the vinegar, and uh, pretty soon it'll be clean. Once the baking soda and vinegar combination has neutralized, it stopped bubbling and it's been sitting for a while, now it's time to go in and do a little detail work. So most of the bigger nozzles will have cleaned up, but it's these tiny pinholes around the perimeter that are usually still stuck maybe with something in them. So I like to use a little stick pin um, and or maybe a, a push pin, but these push pin holes are usually, uh, these are actually a little too big. So this doesn't work for me, but yours might work. This guy requires the thinnest needle I've got and I like to go in and just push through, which you can find some, some of the holes are really easy. Some of them are stuck and you can sort of feel where things are caught. Um, a lot of times when I'm feeling, I just kind of a little twiggy stick kind of breaks off, but it's not too big a deal to go through and push through some of these holes. And most of them will clear up pretty easily. And once you've done that, your hose nozzle is going to work like brand new. Doing this will help keep your hose nozzle out of the landfill. Um, you know, really cheap hose nozzles are plastic and they just, they break down after a year, not even a year sometimes. But these are, the nicer made metal ones will last you years and years and years. Once you've finished poking through all the holes around the outside edge, it's time to put this back together. And it just fits right over the top and the screw goes into place and you tighten it and you may need to adjust the tightness. You want to make sure it's completely tight but not so tight that you can't turn the dial on it if your hose nozzle is one that uh, has many settings. This one has seven different settings so I'm going to tighten it pretty tight and then back it up if it needs more. Now it should not give at all right there and it doesn't so we're good. Let's test it out and see how much better it is. Yay! Well, everyone, that is it. That is how you take care of your hose nozzle and keep them working for years and years and years. Keep them out of the landfill and life is good. If you like this video, share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to find out when our next video comes online. Consider becoming a Patreon subscriber to support all the free stuff that we do here at Garden Nerd. And check out my books that tell you how to grow food and fruit trees. You get Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden for fruit trees, Gardening for Geeks for growing vegetables, and check out my novel, which is a fun read whenever you need a little escape. Garden variety. Happy gardening!